Okay. Um, I have another uh, webinar training that I'm going to be hitting soon. So I wanted to share something with you. I know that at some point we were going to talk about finding our ideal avatar, our ideal customer. And uh, I had actually purchased a training from Maria Andros, who was actually Ray and Jessica Higdon's uh, mentor. And she taught them everything she know. So I about bought it about video and all that. But um, I bought her training, and one of her first modules is how to create your perfect avatar. And Mark and I kind of tried to do this earlier without this structure. But, and we kind of hit on some of it, but we didn't get it all. So I wanted to kind of share with you, uh, if you didn't mind, the uh, structure that she shared with us. So, uh, hi, Rose. So, um, why, why, obviously, we know why we need to know exactly who we're targeting, because you need to know you know, to, to put your, the right advertising in front of the right people. Like if you were advertising to people with dogs, your store, which sells dog food, you're not going to also send that advertising to somebody who has cats, even though your store sells cat food, they're not going to pay attention to it because you're talking to people who have dogs. So you have to make sure you put your message in front of the right people. So, these are the questions, and uh, I'll put this in the Facebook chat group, just our group, the Word document with these questions on it. But uh, how old is he or she? And are they male or female? Uh, what income bracket are they in? Are they married, single, divorced, or separated? Do they have children? What does he or she do for a living? What do they value most? What are the, their qualities? Are they coachable? Do they take action? Do they show up to, for trainings? You know, what magazine, books, or TV shows do they watch? And that's obviously important so that you know where you can find them on the internet, like on Facebook. You can target like Business Week or something. Uh, what motivates them in their life? What are their drivers? What drives them? What other influencers do they follow online? What are their goals? What do they secretly want? What do they want to change? What is their biggest frustration or challenge? And what problems keep them up at night at 4 a.m.? And what is their biggest fear, whether it's rational or irrational? And then the next thing, step you want to do is you want to put that all together in like a story little biography format. Find a little picture or something so that you can hang that picture up if you want. You can hang that picture up and then look at them and instantly remember, oh, yeah, my, my prospect reads this or likes that or fears this. And so let me read to you what Mark and I quickly after using the structure put together we named them too. yeah you're supposed to name them too but so robert is 50 to 55 year old male he's married with children and he makes over fifty thousand dollars a year he is someone who has been in corporate america who's running out of options he values family and charity he watches big bang theory csi nightline <laughs> 48 hour sound familiar steve <laughs> and the Discovery Channel. He reads David Balducci. By Balducci. <sighs> David Baldacci. I can never get that. Biographies, Business Week, and Inc. He follows Tony Robbins, Earl Nightingale, Joel Osteen, and Dan Rather. He secretly wants friends and family to have his best interests at heart, be respected, have peace of mind, and have a safe world for his children and his children's children to grow up in. He is coachable, takes action, appreciates what we have to offer, is respectful of our time, shows up to things, shows up to trainings, is open-minded, is willing to look inward instead of outward, and understands education is not free. 
He wants to be happy and free, pay off his mortgage, retire without worrying about where the money is going to come from, travel, and watch his grandchildren grow up. His frustrations are that he has no time to actually accomplish what he wants to or needs to, and it's hard to find someone he can trust in business. His fears are his money-making machine is going to go away, his company is going to downsize, and he's not ready for anything else, that he will die without feeling like he's accomplished anything outside of work. He is awake at 4 a.m., stressed, and wonders how to keep his family and work separate. He initially wants everyone else to change until he realizes the only thing that only things will get better if he changes himself and his mindset. And we came up with that in five minutes. Wow, that's amazing. Really good. Oh, yeah. That's, that's Robert. <laughs> I was going to ask if there was a picture. <laughs> it was really hard to find a Robert that wasn't Robert Patterson or... Uh, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. There's other Roberts. Huh? So, anyway, uh, that was the structure we used. And like I said, I mean, on the way back from Orlando, we sat there for hours and wrote, the pains uh, and what they wanted, but we didn't get any deeper than that. And so using this structure, and I'll put the Word document in our Facebook group, uh, it was really easy. I, yeah, it was kind of difficult to think about what shows they watch or what they read, but because Mark is our target market, he was doing that already. So he kind of already kind of knew some of that. So I, I missed it, you guys. Um, where did you get the structure? Did you pull it from a book or something? I uh, Maria Andros, she was uh, Ray and Jessica Higdon's mentor. Okay. And uh, I bought one of her trainings about how to do, you know, how to market using video. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the first things she talked about was how to create your your ideal avatar. That's amazing. Good job, you guys. When I'm oh, great. really good. Now we just got to go after him. <laughs> right. When I'm talking about the details, my daughter, it, she was talking about uh, things that had happened at the hospital. And when I jumped onto this, I thought you were talking about a patient that somebody had known. And I said, oh my gosh, I was just having that conversation over here. <laughs> it wasn't an obituary. <laughs> It kind of sounded, sounded like, like one, though. It did, yeah. Well, when you said he was stressed and all that, I thought, oh, my gosh, that's just what I was having to talk to her about. <laughs> a lot of that going around. Mark is recording it so that it'll be back up on the – he'll put it on the, the Facebook chat, Janelle, if you missed it. Uh, no, I know what it was about now. Okay. I, I had to wait until when you held it up because Mark told me earlier today what you were teaching on tonight. Okay. I promoted you. <laughs> he did. He did. I really like her too. I mean, Maria Andros, I really like her teaching style and this course that I took. What was the name of the course? How to uh, market using video. Kind of. I mean, I don't okay. six figure. She'll put that something. in the document too. Yeah. What, what about her last name? How do you spell her last name? Because that she doesn't ring a bell. With A N D R O S. It, once you see her picture, you'll know who it is. Okay. Probably. I, I mean, she's. I've a, seen her a lot on Facebook. It surprised me when I found out that she actually mentored Ray Higdon. Or so she says. Well, I've I've bought uh, Ray's trainings and Jessica's too. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Over the past few years. Yeah. Yeah, she's got a whole bunch of things on Google. She's got a... Okay, I see it now. So I can share more as I get into the training, you know, on future Wednesdays. That'd be good. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, I will leave you guys to it. I have to get to my other webinar. What, you, what, what webinar are you getting on to? 
Elite Marketing Pro, their traffic strategies. And who's that with? Tim Irway, oh. Elite Marketing Pro. I'm, I'm not invited. Oh, how's that? I've I got uh, a bunch of um, uh, traffic uh, training with uh, Vic Streisius. So I'll, I'll compare notes with you. Yeah, I like his training too. I just like him because he's so dynamic about things. Yeah. So speaking of traffic, I've got a couple questions. And Rose, you may you may have some input into this. Um, you you saw that little blurb that I put up um, about the lead list uh, at Christmas time. That somehow I was at number four or five on the, the leads for that week. I said, woo, that's great. But after that, um, you know, I got um, to boss and then had, I think like 12 sales during that month. But out of um, two or 3,000 leads or hits that I'd gotten, it didn't seem like they were very targeted because some of the people that we were sending these things to said, um, I don't know what this is about. And, you know, I was going through the same funnel, the, the preloaded um, stuff. I had customized it and that kind of thing, of course, but I was surprised that these people were saying like, I'm not interested in having a business. Why would Jason send us that kind of traffic if he knows what Michael and Alex want? Have you guys had any, feedback on that can I answer that real quick sure um, a lot of their ads or solo ads target people for work at home if you track those clicks like with click magic or something and you go back and look at it it's all like work from home stuff they want to work for somebody else they just don't want to leave yeah they don't house. want a business and that's the thing that I found I got a lot of emails from people that were saying um, how much can I earn with this? And I would write them back and I'd say, um, this isn't an employment thing. It is actual, you know, whatever you want to make out of this. And then they would say, no, I'm not interested in that kind of thing. We, yeah, we get that a lot. That's why I liked John's banner ad traffic. I know Sherry didn't have good luck with them, but I liked that traffic because it was a banner that they actually had to click on and be interested to right. enter their email. It's not something like they're on somebody's email list from some something, you know, work at home and they actually right. are interested in a business. Yeah, I was thinking about um, one of one of the guys in Empowered Network, um, Joe Labalsamo, yeah. is, um, you know, he's like number one on the leaderboard for leads, which as a traffic broker, he ought to be. And so I wondered why, if you've got somebody in Empower Network, he would know exactly the kind of traffic. Why is it that um, Michael and Alex don't use him? Because Alex went and found and spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars from this one person that he heard about. And he probably gets a lot of free traffic from us through that source. No doubt. Plus, they also get a commission on that of like 5% or 15%. So I know that they're, they're um, recycling um, a lot of that into more traffic for them. But, you know, at the same time, uh, what did I spend? I got like uh, 3,500 clicks that I ordered last month. And I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, okay, so that got me 12 sales. But when you look at what the cost of those particular sales was, that's an enormous amount. And I don't particularly want to spend, you know, $3,000 on traffic every month to get 12 sales, six of which refund. Have you, have you tried John's traffic, his banner ad before? I haven't. I would try it. Try it and see if you got a better result. We've always gotten a better result with that traffic. And Sherry, what, what was your uh, experience with that? The, uh, with John's traffic? Uh-huh. 
Uh, I think I just used it once, but you know what I've, I've found is um, that's going to happen with any, you know, I, I did not get any uh, sales at all, but you know, I've, I've bought traffic several weeks in the boot camp and did not get any sales. Hmm. So, you know, I think that's pretty much going to happen. It's, it's a matter of being consistent and I, I, more than likely I didn't give his traffic um, long enough to be consistent. I wasn't consistent enough with his traffic. I'll put it like that. Well, you know, like, I said that, go ahead, Michelle. And like Sherry said, I mean, we, we got John's traffic and had great results through his traffic for weeks throughout the boot camp. But the last two weeks we bought his traffic, we got zero, nothing, barely any opt-ins either. And that was unusual, but it must've been, you know, the time of the year or the time of the month or whatever it was. Well, yeah. and even on the, um, Michael's traffic, 19% opt in, you know, I've gotten that and that's not, um, you, did it. Are yeah, you guys I, frozen. No. no. Am I? No. <laughs> you were for a second, but you, Came out you might be okay. out there in Missouri. I don't know. We are in Washington, D.C. The bird bath <laughs> out front is a skating pond. <laughs> okay, I gotta go. See you later. Okay. Bye, Bye Michelle. Bye. Hey, in, Bye. Um, in about three or four weeks, I'm due to go out to California uh, for a conference out there on um, um, traffic and conversion. So I'll be going out to San Diego for um, this one. So I'll take notes from there and put something together so I can share some of the information with this group. Cool. Yeah, yeah. who's leading that, Janelle? It's uh, Ryan Dice from uh, Digital Marketer. I like him. I do too. Yeah. I, I like the whole program and I've got a subscription to that. So um, I've got all the... Um, um, the EPs, all the um, executive plans and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, trying to get some <coughs> practical things in addition to the mindset stuff. So, uh, you yeah, know. he teaches, he teaches differently in the fact of, you know, how many emails is appropriate in the follow up. And he, you know, he's got like a one, 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 take a break, do another two follow-ups he's got like a seven series follow it's very interesting and then depending on when you snag an interest then he drops it down to a different campaign it's right. very very interesting and i was mulling over it um over the holidays thinking about segmenting and different uh campaign strategies because i will tell you just talking about the traffic alone um, my conversions have not been where they need to be. And so I'm personally, I'm, I'm, um, struggling with trying to figure out not only the front end conversions, because since merger, um, I, I've not been satisfied and yeah, I, I, saw, I saw, yeah, I saw a great, and I, so I'm not trying to do a, you know, a negative right. piece on this, but it's got to be better, um, but the back end conversions, I'm not getting anything, anything. So I'm sitting here going, yikes. <laughs> and that's what I was saying about all that, the, the clicks that I bought, because I thought, okay, you know, I bought um, a thousand a week during the first month of the boot camp, and then last month, I bought many times more than that. But, you know, I was starting to look at how much those were costing and what I was getting. And I looked at everybody else's, um, um, you know, their percentages on the far right column of that. And um, it's right in there. I think it's, it's like um, almost 1% of the sales. And I think that it's something like, uh, twenty-two percent or something like that for the conversion. So it's right in there with with others that you know have been posting there. Yeah, that's about right. I did an analysis on everyone in the boot camp. <laughs> you guys know I did. Yeah, and <laughs> I'm just, so much like you, Rose. It's it's scary. I just haven't shared it. I shared it with the leaders. Um, yeah. 
because I thought that was appropriate. Right. And uh, I frankly, I don't even know if they reviewed it. So it is what it is. And it's, <laughs> but your point, it was pretty much neck and neck. Of course, the, all those were pretty high. But the question is, how come they're so high? Of course, they're buying um, very, very consistent traffic. So then I upped my traffic. Right. And I was consistent, 1,000 clicks per week for eight weeks straight. So right. I'm like, bam, bam, bam. But still, my follow through um, could have been better. Mm -hmm. So I'm acknowledging that and owning it. But I'm not seeing uh, yeah. anywhere near, uh, 40, 50, anywhere near 70% opt-in. I am seeing 30% opt-in, but I'm not seeing, um, anyone do first time sales. I'm usually seeing them buy on day three of my autoresponder or day four, right. nowhere near day one, day two. That's my analysis anyway. Yeah. And that's the same thing that, that I got that the um the first week of new um auto responders i got um 35 percent open rate on the first day and then it went down to seven percent by the end of the week of being opened mm -hmm. and so i was looking at all the ones that were opening it all the ones that were clicking on it and out of 100 for this last one that opened it, I sent it out to 1,200. Um, 184 opened it, and six clicked on the links through it. Okay. So 1,200 to get six. I thought, wow, that, you know, I really need to, to uh, do something better as far as getting the open rates on these. Did you write um, your own emails? Yeah, that's um, very yeah, that was the thing that um, after I finished that uh, first group of um, preloads and it went from 35% open to 6 or 7%, I think, um, I kept watching them go further and further down and they just weren't, you know, um, creating any interest. So then I started creating my own um, um, newsletters and that helped. So they were consistently around 17 to 20%. Wow. That's good. Yeah, so that's good. That, that I thought was, awesome. much, was much better than 7%. And um, so I've been working on headlines and sending the, uh, the newsletters things that I've written, but then that's what I do for a living. So I'm looking at this thinking, shoot, you know, I should be getting better engagement than that. Well, it depends, right? So, um, so because my open rates weren't well, clearly as high as yours. So God love you. That's fantastic. <laughs> you need to celebrate that. Yeah. Um, so I, I've been investigating copywriting and I was previous, you know, we all have passed, but I was um, a director of communication at AT&T. So I used to run all, pardon? That's what I do for the government. Okay. Yeah. So that was some component. So I think I can write and I think I can speak. So I'm like, screw it. I'm going to take it instead of doing all these, Hey, yo dude, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Wipey time things. Yeah. Whatever I said it, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my spin on it. So that's what I've been doing, and those have been getting more of a response. And putting in my cell phone, saying text me, because hell, I'm not getting anything else. So right. that's how they can get to me. Otherwise, I've got all these piece parts everywhere else. I've got to get to them somehow. So and, I just started writing. And that's the thing that I have found is the other things that are. Um, you know the swipey stuff it doesn't sound like me uh -uh. it doesn't have anything to do with me and i can i can customize that all i want to but most of that stuff is you know stuff that i would never say but i've said okay i'll try that but now that i have have done um i'm just opening up the uh the newsletters here seeing if i can see the statistics on this thing um there it goes but 
at, once I started customizing it and then, you know, I would send out um, one newsletter and then I would send out a blog post, just say, hey, here's, here's the blog uh, for today. This is just pure value kind of things. And um, yeah, so like this last one here, um, the elephant in the room questions had a 14.3 open rate and had um, one and a half, one point six six uh, click through. So it said um, twelve hundred and sixty three were sent, one hundred and seventy seven were opened, twenty one clicked, and seven unsubscribed. <laughs> so I don't know it, how that is to anybody else, but that's one I did myself. Those numbers sound good to me. Man, you know that uh, you got to run with that, and okay. I, I'm happy to share stuff that I write. And I mean, I have nothing to hide. And as long as we yeah. flip it and do whatever else, we have nothing to. I don't. And that, yeah, and that's the thing that um, you know, if if you find something that what's considered, what would you consider a good open rate? Well, over ten. Oh, easy. Yeah. I mean, Easy. they're saying 5% is good. I've heard that. 5% is good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've heard three. You yeah. know, I've heard Michael say anywhere from three to five is a good open rate. Open rate? And he does. Yeah, that's why we're saying you're doing awesome. <laughs> I'm sitting here yeah. thinking. How you're a rock star. <laughs> yeah, really. Three to five. <laughs> the well, average, the average uh, consumer now gets 148, 149 emails per day. So to cut through that yeah. and to actually get someone to open it is amazing. Well, I won't worry about that quite so much, but I was thinking, <laughs> you know, I thought, gee, that's, uh, that just wasn't computing for me. I'm thinking 100% should open it. Maybe they don't click, but, you know, everybody no. should open it. Do you open all your emails? Are you kidding? Because I subscribe to everybody's. Um, exactly. That's every cool. time I want to get a um, an ebook or a, a you know lead magnet, I subscribe to all of those, and I don't unsubscribe. That's the point. So yeah. here's. So, so here's, most other people. <laughs> so here's something else I did, and I don't know if you guys are on Alex's list. Uh, I, I presume you are, but if you're not, um, I had created a survey. Uh, late last year and I sat on my laurels and I didn't send it out because I was like I don't know what I'll do well log in long story short Alex is consistent and he sends his shit stuff out sorry I'm a kid uh, his stuff out right so he sends and I get his survey yesterday I'm like dad gone it so anyway he puts the fire under my britches and I'm like well I'm gonna get my survey out so I redid my survey my point is I'm trying to figure out what my group my app my list is actually consisting of um because we we don't actually know uh really do they own their own business or are they unemployed whatever so anyway i took his survey i took mine and i combined them oh good and i sent out my survey so anyway if that helps i i'd like to know this year of because my list isn't that big but it's getting bigger just in my email list alone. It's like just under 4,500 names. So there's a book called ask. I love it. I got it. It's on my name. Yeah, that's all about surveys, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. so what did you use to create your survey? I use survey monkey, but uh, get response also has survey. That's what I was wondering. Cause I see these in here. So I wondered if anybody had used them. Yeah. I used it in get response. I created one there, but, in my past job, I'm so familiar with SurveyMonkey that I just looked it up in SurveyMonkey too. Okay. And you well, can use it free. Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking about that, sending, a, creating a survey because, you know, I look at this and I say, I have no idea what these people are interested in. And so I was going to say, you know, I've got, um, quote unquote, I could make four interest groups for newsletters. Are right. you interested in, in um, financing a laptop lifestyle? Are you interested in work from home? Are you interested in, um, you know, social media? Or, you know, what is it that, that you're interested in? 
and um, it, it's <laughs> over here. <laughs> I'm like, okay, over which way do we wave to you? <laughs> so, so it's it, down. Okay, so um, you know that's the kind of thing that I think most of the people that are on this list are. I've got um, I've got about a dozen that open every single email and click through on every single link. I can go through and when I see the show contacts, I know who's going to show up on there. And so that's it's kind of interesting. But the rest of them, I think, are probably um, kind of eggs. They're never going to hatch. So I'm thinking that I'll, I'll continue to buy 500 clicks from either Michael or John, but then also um, branch out into some of the others. I know that Alex says don't do that, but my do what you want. Hey, there's two other things. I, oh, I know you guys were going to run out of time. There's two other things I wanted to comment. We're good. Okay. Um, you guys don't understand about bounce rates, right? So I was investigating that a little bit more. And with bounce rates, it, it's hard bounce and soft bounce. Well, if someone goes on your website and clicks like the back, like go back a screen, that's not necessarily considered a bounce or it is considered a bounce. It's, it's one of those things. It is. It is. Yes. It is but they still watched your particular situation. The other thing I'd like to uh, mention is I know, and a lot of others that are really good on um, their computer, a lot of them have uh, their emails open in view, like preview screen, where they don't open their emails. Right. So a lot of these could be skewed, and I am suggesting that they are, because I do it all the time. And if you so whether they're open or not doesn't necessarily mean that Well, the, the number can be higher, but it won't be any lower than this. So, right. if, so if I've got 17% or 14% or whatever it happens to be, it, that's the minimum. That's right. Well, I'll take it if, if, if it could be a little more than that. You're very quiet over there, Tim. Oh, I didn't want to interrupt you guys. Sound like you got a good conversation going. Well, we're talking about traffic and, and the number of opt-ins and leads and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Hey, I've been I've been trying a a little site called Udemy. Uh, U D I M I. Has anybody ever tried that? U D E M Y. Huh? No, no. No, it's, it's another one, U-D-I-M-I. -I. It's a traffic site, solo, solo as guy sells in there. And I've been trying them out. I got, I, I just bought like 50, just to test them out. And I got one, I got uh, 40, 40 opt-ins off of. And the other one, I got 13. But I changed my capture page uh, about halfway between, through that one. So uh, I got, I have 100. I got like a 60% okay. opt-in. But you don't uh, know how they're responding to your clicks and whether they'll buy yeah. anything yet. No, not yet. I don't. I don't and think what, people buy them right at the beginning. It's anyway. Right. What do you know about the um, the kind of traffic? Uh, you can go in and request. Uh, you can put in there you want marketing and okay. different things like that. And it's not. I mean, it was a bad cost. I mean, I just bought another hundred fifty for. It was under hundred bucks. We're all going to hell for this, you know that. Yeah. Well, I'm testing. I'm just testing. I'm if already near Memphis. Fine. Huh? I already live near Memphis. I'm not far from it. <laughs> <laughs> I like Memphis. <laughs> hey guys, I, I'm going down with this. It's not personal, it's business. All I gotta say. That's it. Yeah. That's Good. the whole thing. Yeah, if, I, if one thing isn't working, use something else. Before I got an Empower Network, I was looking into copywriting, like you were saying, Rose. I bought uh, the AWAI course. Oh, yeah. 
and now I got to blow the dust off it and look at it again because I think that's that's where the money is. I mean, we it got is. thousands and thousands of people on the list, but we're not doing anything with it. In fact, um, Darren Hanser, you yeah. know, oh, you know you. Him? he writes the copy for David Wood. Yeah. He also writes the copy for David Sharp still to this day. Really? And so, oh, yeah. And so. Um, How did you know that? Well, I'm about to tell you. So <laughs> at, the, <laughs> <laughs> at the last event, again, it's not personal, it's business. I got to the event early and I went to a separate mastermind that I was invited to. And I shared the same house with a number of people. And Darren oh, yeah. Hitler happened to be one of them. And it's amazing what you learn in a hot tub with people. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just business. <laughs> well, I have to say that all of a sudden I'm not so enamored of Darren Hanser anymore because I really what because he's in a hot tub with me? No, no. <laughs> some, of those, some of those messages that come out, like I am quite surprised. Before I realized that was a a um, a letter, I wrote back to Dave Wood and say, I don't know why you're completely surprised. I bought my ticket months ago. So get off my case. And I was like, I think that's Rob. That's Rob at Empower Network doing those. <laughs> maybe, you know, this, maybe, it, maybe from him, but you know, it was one that had Dave's signature on the bottom. Yeah, of it. But I think Rob writes those for the ones from Empower. I think Darren does the other stuff for David Wood and David Sharp. Yeah, he, he does both, but I, I actually, well, our time's clicking, but um, at the mastermind, in fact, if I can find the PDF, I don't, I, I pay to be in there, but I beg, borrow, and I share. So I will share. Uh, there was a PDF that Darren shared with me, which I can, I will share, about some of the copywriting and what he utilizes and tips and tricks. I'll write that down. It's gold. Oh, it is gold, and that's what he uses. And I'm telling you, he charges a boatload, but he's, he's my buddy now, so. Unless you're in a hot tub, then it's free. Well, <laughs> well, I um, we are recording this, Rose. Just so you know, where yeah, where are we putting? Um, you gotta remind we, me, man. Where where are we putting our uh, files that that we want to share? Are we posting them as attachments in the uh, the messenger? Yeah, that's what Michelle just did. Okay, all right. Well, I'll get some of the things that, that I've got and I'll share them with you as well. One minute. Why does Maybe Michael I... say we're live? Because the link is live for the other meeting. Oh, well, almost live. Link is live. Okay. okay. What the heck? They keep changing the time on this. So. Hey, Rose, did you get my... Um... My message about re your request for your blog address? I don't know. Probably not. Can you, can you well, check your email? Messages?